So I just wanted to talk through the dexterous solution to this problem. Uh, it's a pretty good solution. It's like slightly worse than the top-down recursive with memoization and the iterative bottom-up solution uh, to the min path sum problem. Um, one thing you'll notice though, if you do the actual like big O calculation, the big O uh, runtime or the big O time complexity of Dijkstra's is E log V, where E is the number of edges and V is the number of vertices. Um, one thing about the edge calculation uh, is the number of edges ends up being uh, M, the number of columns minus one times N plus N, the number of rows minus one times M. And essentially this is gonna end up being 2MN minus N minus M. So if it's a square matrix, it's just gonna be 2m squared minus 2m or 2m squared minus 2n, whatever you use. So this is going to be an edge value that's going to be uh, like quadratic. So because the square value, say it's a square matrix, we're going to get um, an n squared log n squared value uh, for our time complexity, which although asymptotically it runs very close to um, the, the n squared value that you'll see for uh, like the bottom up solution or the top down solution, uh, it's actually slightly greater. So to implement Dijkstra's, all we're going to need to do is a breadth first search with a visited set and a priority queue. And in this case, we're going to use the minheap library. Um, we're going to be keeping track of our state in a similar way to, we did, to what we did with like the top down bottom up solutions uh, in the other video. So we're just going to have our weight, current row, current column, and that's going to be our grid at 0, 0, and 0, and 0. And then our heap is going to have these values. Uh, and we're always going to be putting our weight uh, in the like leftmost index because that's how it'll keep its heap invariant. And it will always then sort the lowest weight current path to the front. Um, and then we just have to make our visited set. And get our directions, which are going down and going uh, to the right. And then the last thing is just, we can get the length of the grid. Uh, so the number of rows and the number of columns. And then with this, we can do our breadth first search. So we can say, well, our current row um, is less than N and our current column is less than M. Uh, we can pop out uh, the current weight, current row, and current column from our heap. So this will be heap Q dot heap pop uh, of our heap. Um, and then if our current row is equal to n minus one and our current column is equal to m minus one can return our current weight. Um, otherwise for i, j in our directions, we can check out new directions. So our new row equals our current row plus i and our new column is equal to our current column plus j. And then if our new row is inside the grid, and our new column is inside the grid, uh, and our new row, new column, is not in our visited set. We can add that to our visited set. And then we can add this new weight to our heap. So that'll be our grid at new row, new column, uh, our new row and our new column. And then actually we need to make sure to add our current weight to this because that's the weight of the current path. Um, so if this is coded up correctly, this should work uh, for I, J in directions. It's called direction. So we'll call it directions. Cool, this works. And awesome, this works. Cool, so basically all you need to know for Dijkstra's is that uh, you need a visited set and you need some priority queue. Uh, usually that can be a heap. Uh, and then you can use that heap invariant to look at the next or the current best path and look out in all the possible directions. Uh, in this case, we're limited in our directions. They only make us look 
down and right, which is actually it makes the coding a lot easier. Um, but yeah, that's that's Dijkstra's. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know down below.